start the recording now. So, uh, yep, so this is our CNC milling machine. This is the device we've been talking about for the uh, uh, assignment. And also we have this channel, which can have the bolts and the nuts to fix the part if it's going to have a hole to be drilled, uh, drilled at the early stages of the machining. Uh, this is a turret uh, device which holding multiple cutting tools at the same time so we can change the tool while the machining is happening without actually stopping the uh, the whole machining but uh, tell them about the setup of the, of the tools so setting up the tools is a matter of pulling these out and there's uh, collets so you can put the drill piece or the milling piece into the actual holder and the chuck and then that inserts back up and it's held in place with some little uh, bolts that are in here and that just holds the head of it from falling out. What's really critical though is knowing the different distances and where this end point is in space because as you come down into your part you need to know how far you can come down to say if you were to touch the top of this part you want to be at zero height so you need to apply an offset in the actual machine and the way we do that is the really simple way is pretty much measuring the difference um, of the extruded uh, milling piece uh, and then applying a, a number that's known to the system and then we type that in as an offset. Uh, the same as when we set up the actual piece itself and we were to install this part. So I'll install the part first which is just a matter of loosening this. Now in this subject actually we're using the foam because uh, we want to keep the cutting tool life as long as possible and the foam is not going to add any uh, uh, real forces on the cutting tool and this is an advantage. Um, now uh, the, for the total zero point for uh, this vice, what did you put it? So the zero point for this is the front left hand piece on the top layer. So it's really important to kind of understand where you're going to be putting your part before you even do your CAD camming uh, because if your jigging piece was like flush with that, you probably wouldn't put that as your datum. You might go to the other back end instead. Uh, so it's kind of important to set all of this up first and then go to your, your software to start configuring. And it's going to be all about moving these pieces. So if I was to set the origin on this piece, I need to tell the machine that that corner there in space is zero, zero, zero. And it's the same as the tool. I apply an offset. So yeah. the zero, zero, zero of the machine is called the reference point. So I can do that. I can take the machine to, when I turn the machine on, I can take it to a reference location. So I just set the machine down to, it's like little target points here. And then I can press the button. I can change the speeds of the machine. So I'm gonna run this like pretty fast, 70% to move along. And you can see now that my part, it's moved slightly in space. So where the bed is and where the stepper motors know they are is it's zero, zero, zero in a way. And then we want to move this piece um, in my X, Y, and Z until that tip is on the top. Okay. So just remember once again, this is the table. The longest size is always the X. The shortest size is going to be the Y. The most, uh, the most important axes are going to be the X and the Z. The Z is the axis where the tool is going to be rotating around and going up and down. Actually, the turn is sliding on this slider here. And what we have, have actually here is a gearbox which is going to distribute the motion on the different uh, uh, devices when the turn is going to rotate. Uh, you can see that this, this has been numbered, so this is one, this is two, that's why we are going to change the tool name on the code to be tool number two. Okay, so now we go to make up, oh, let's show them the coolant. Okay, now uh, usually we're going to machine um, a metal, we need to reduce the fraction between the cutting tool and the work part. So we're using a coolant to turn it on, I know it's going to be a missy thing. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the coolant is going to do the following function. First, it's going to be pull down the, the fraction force. We use the fraction itself as a lubricant, and thus we are going to increase both the uh, tool life and the heat generated on the work part. Because the heat is always going to be expand the size, and then we have to pull it down, and this will give us um, um, uh, 
the uh, less accuracy in the machining process. We have to always remember that. The heat effects mostly is going to be important in the case of the turning more than the milling because the speed of the cutting is going to be always higher. The other uh, advantage is to wash up the chip. So the chip is going to be accumulated here in the bottom and then we can collect it. Uh, we're using the foam now so we don't, we're, not, we're not going to have this um, issue at the moment. This machine is not going to work until we are going to close the door. That's for the safety of the operator. Maybe this is not going to be available for all the machines, right? So what I might do now is, now that I've got my workpiece in, I've already worked out where the X, Y, and Z position is of that origin. I typically like just to double check that the machine knows where that is and none of my numbers have changed. So I do that really slowly and I can write a really small bit of code inside of here that does that. So, if I go into our manual programming mode where I'm not running a bit of script, uh, I can hit the reset button, and this is like my program name. I'm loading my G54 file, which is my offset file. Uh, so if I look at my offsets, you can see that my G54 here is my X, Y, and Z positions of that location. So I'm gonna... Okay, you're pressing these buttons here. Yes, yeah, so this is my offset and my graph. So this is for programming, and this is for setting up the calibrations of the machine. I can send you the name of this machine so you can search about more uh, uh, resources online. And uh, I, I, what, what would be the stage that the student can use this one, for example, for their capstone? What's that, There's another, a certain stage where the student can come to here and get your help for using this machine for their uh, capstone, for example, to cut them parts. Do we have uh, such uh, ability to do that? You could just message Carlo and ah, okay. ask uh, to organize the time with him, myself, or one of the other tutors from this subject. Uh, and we can, we can come down and run the machining for you. There's a lot of knowledge in terms of how to run this machine safety. Yeah. Uh, and I've spent a few months just doing training just on this machine alone. So it's not something you just pick up and work straight away. Of understanding course, yeah. the, the software side and then understanding this are very, very, very different things. Um, so I'll keep talking you through my little manual code. So I load my XYZ uh, positions with G54. I then want to use tool number two and then I want to call it and set it. And then I want to call my H2 offset, which is my tool offset length, and then load that. And then I want to tell it to go without turning on the spindle uh, to X, Y, Z, 0, 0, 0, which is our origin. So let's do that. Let's turn our machine up. I go down to a low speed, and then I click my start button, and the machine will just move to that location. I slow it down when it gets close because I just like to make sure I'm not gonna run into anything because we are doing a check after all. And you can see that I'm a little, little tiny bit off on this uh, piece, but that's just because we've cut a lot of foam and there's a couple of different sizes uh, that are in the box. Yeah, very, Some of them got a little bit small, squashed yeah. as well. Yeah, but you can tell that the cell, the center of the cutting tool is only total zero point. So yep. that's, that's good. Yeah. And for the scope of this assignment, it's fine. If yeah. I was cutting my own work piece though, I, this probably wouldn't be acceptable. Yeah. Uh, but for the scope of this assignment and it's just foam, this is fine. It's also not a level piece. Um, if I was to make this level, I would face the top of the part first, down a certain distance, and then I'd be able to get a really nice flat piece mm -hmm. um, instead, but that doesn't matter too much. The other thing that I do is when I'm actually reading uh, the machine, I can know exactly what my distance to go is. So when I'm running this, if I rerun this, up here there's a little box that tells me my distance to go on this command. So I'll turn my speed right down and hit go on that. You can see it wants to go negative in the Z now and we've got eight millimeters to go. So I can go really slowly and look at both the machine and this distance to determine my uh, kind of my zero location. But I know I'm not gonna crash as well because I can just gauge it, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good. So then I've, I've got my part, I know I'm pretty good to go here. I'm just gonna move the machine back upwards in space, just so that I'm away from my part before I run any of the actual code. So that's good. 
I can then come down to my program settings and I can load a program. So I can, it's just like a normal navigation folder here. I can find my part, which is a .nc file. I can load that. And then here is where it's gonna show me my actual code itself. And I can just use the up down keys on the keyboard to read through it. So the first things that I'm checking is my tool number. So I'm on tool number two. We've called that offset. And my first Z height is not too high. So this Z height, when you export on the G milling 3X machine, that will default to 120. And pretty much just means make sure that the uh, tool is really far away from the part when we start. Because you want to give the spindle time to start up and everything like that. You don't want to start inside your part, accidentally crash. Uh, 120 though for this machine is too big. There's the Z height on the machine just will not physically go that far. So we just change that to Z35. Uh, I then go through and I check our feed rate and our spindle rate, make sure they're appropriate for the material you're cutting. Uh, for foam, we want to go really fast and we want a high speed uh, or feed rate. So what unit do you have here for the feed rate? Is it millimeter per minute? Yes, yep. yes it is, it's and, millimeters per minute. And the S is RPM. RPM, correct. Per minute. Yep. Yeah, that is correct. And we can check that because it tells me my units here. Yep. And also when, this, when the machine's running, it'll tell me what my speed rate, oh, my feed rate is here and my spindle rate is there. Mm -hmm. And that'll change manually by the machine as well. It's got some smarts that if it's doing a curve, it, it just physically can't do say 1000 millimeters per minute. Right. It's gonna default itself down to what it can achieve. The next thing I do is I scroll through this document and I'm reading the Z heights. Um, I normally do this in a text document instead. I'll normally go to the, the hard copy of the document. Oops. Load it up, for example. No, just any example, does it have to be the same one? No. Open it in Notepad and then I will just search for Z height and I just tap through on all my Z's and read them. And I know that my, my part depth is 12 mil. That's how far we're cutting into this part, just from the design. And I just keep reading through it and make sure there's no number that's bigger than negative uh, 12, or less oh, than negative 12. Smaller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, depending on what way you wanna kind of think about your relative <laughs> yeah. positions. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't wanna run into any of my, uh, my vices uh, and my, my work piece. So we just go through that, that's that's good. And actually that's happened before, one of the students said he did it, but when he gave it to us, we crushed with the uh, table. Yeah, he ran straight into it, because he had a negative 30, and that broke the machine. So yeah. we, we want to make sure that we're avoiding errors like that. So we take our time, we read through all of the code here. And once we're through all of that, what I will then typically do is I'll do a thing called a dry run. So I press the dry run button on here, and that won't activate the motor. So the spindle won't turn on, and the machine will just move about in its place. So it's my way of just kind of simulating the job, and I'll also apply an offset, because we don't want to obviously just press into the part. We want to do all of this in the air above the part. So the Z height from the table is 82 millimeters. I'm gonna make that a bit larger and go to 102 millimeters. So my Z's now increased. We can go back to my program, Go to the top of my program, turn the speed of my machine down, go to run mode. My dry run's on, so that's good. And then I can just hit the green button here. And my machine will start running. I can change the speed up and down so I go really fast. And I can also go really slow. Just increase the speed a little bit. Um, ah, it's doing the curve cutting. Okay. So once I So once Carlo's done cutting in the background, uh, I can then know that my part is 
in a pretty good position and it's gonna run the code that I want to. Uh, what I'm watching is that the tool path that it's taking matches the simulation that I've seen on my SolidWorks. But at higher level. At a higher level, of course, yeah. yeah. So then I can turn my dry run off. I can change my offset back to the height of the part. Go to the top of my code, make sure that's turned off, because if we don't want to run the motors, we really need to make sure they run. Turn my speed really down, and then I hit go. The machine will turn on. It's not really moving anywhere because I'm on 1% speed. I then speed it up, and it's going to go to its first location. So that's the Z35. And we're going to go into our part, and we're going to start cutting. I get to pause the recording and I get to uh, start at the end of the operation. Okay, so this is your finished part. We've done all the machining, the details we have. And uh, what will be the next step? So the next step is to move the tool piece away from uh, the part. So sometimes it might finish really close. Uh, so I can do that just from driving the machine around. So I can move my Z height up. I can move my X away, and then I can also move my Y as well. So I normally try and bring the part as far away from the tool piece as possible, mainly because that's really sharp and my fingers are not very strong against metal. I'll then use my Allen key, undo my part, take my work piece out, observe it, make sure I'm pretty happy with it. And then I will take my vacuum cleaner and I'll remove all of the debris from the machine just to give it a bit of a clean up. Uh, once I'm done with everything and I'm fully done for the day, that's where I can take my vice grip out and leave it nice and clean for the next user to get onto the machine. Okay, that's it for today. And if you have any question, you can either send me an email, uh, contact uh, Ron. Actually, you are with us in, on team, right? Yes, yep, I'm on Teams, so yeah. you can tag me on Teams if you get any questions. Uh, okay, okay, so thank you very much, and uh, we'll come back to you later if you have any other questions. Sounds good, thank okay. you. Thank you, bye.